we have had record-breaking rain and frost in winter here in Canberra. So it's unavoidable that succulents that are grown outdoors will suffer some root rotting. So in this video, I'd like to show you how to save some of these succulents that are affected by too much rain and frost. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. These peaches and cream or Atlantis that I've been growing in this pot for about almost two years now. Although it's small, it is not showing any signs of being affected by the rain or the frost at all. Compared to this other one, which is just a few months old. Now these peaches and cream, we have to clean up. I have to remove these rotting leaves on the back so it doesn't rot up more and infect other parts of the plants and kill the plant as well so this will have a higher chance of dying if I don't take this off you now that one on top the subcolumbosa la 26 we can just that one's already a goner but there you go oh see there you go there's a little snail hiding at the back no 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 you go there don't want to touch you the leaves they're all gone so that's frost bitten but i probably shouldn't have removed that because there's babies in there but it will just eat through the baby as well so see those tiny little plantlets there and since we are getting more rain and also frost forecasts for the next coming days I can take that off as well oh just another baby as well <laughs> but it's okay they actually grow quite easy or propagate easily so with this one after I finish cleaning this I'm going to move it somewhere where it doesn't get rained on or at least it's protected because there's some karambosa at the back there. There's lots of babies as well. So basically with this one, I'll just clean it all up, remove all anything that's black and soft will be taken out. And the rest of the plants, okay, hang on that one there. I will be moving them under cover. So I'll just take this off without hitting my other pretty pots here. Okay, that's heavy. I'll put you in here where you won't get any rain on anymore, but you'll still get lots of bright light. So you can just stay there for now. And I'm going to continue cleaning that later on off camera. And I'm going to go check the other ones. So this pocket python blue haze here is not affected by the frost at all. So although it's kept in this pretty pot or the big pretty pot, I will also put this in the garden because they're very, very hardy. So that one is like a leaf propagation supposedly, but it's sort of rotted. So I'll remove that. But the rest of it, look, there are all these babies growing. Look at that. They're so cute and pink. And that's always uh, good, a very strong plant. Anyway, this one here, I forgot I have to remove this because it's still sitting in water. Look. Okay. This goes to show you that how resilient succulents can be. So this one I'm just going to drain. And this one is, I think, Marquesa. And... Uh, this one didn't have a name actually, but it's an Agavoidis. So I'll just remove all of that. And so before I've now finished cleaning it up, and this actually at the back, it's got a name. This is called Echeveria Gavoidis 
prolifera so now so that is looking pretty I have also drained the water that's in this container or pot it's so pretty but I can't drill a hole in it because it's stainless steel so I just put some rocks in there and I'll put this one back there prolifica only have one rotted leaf the rest of it is good my Atlantis here now has been cleaned and hang on I, I missed that uh, leaf from the Subcotton Borsa LA 026 but you can see that that Sabi there has got lots of babies and I remove the leaves or the leaves that have rotted and also dry leaves but in here I can see some babies from the Atlantis as well so it's not advisable that I put it back where it was because it's just gonna get hit by the frost and it's gonna get too much rain on and so now I put it here somewhere where it's gonna be spared from the rain but it's still out in the open here so this is my acclimatization area that's sort of in out in the open so okay open air up the top but you've got the shelf here covering it so it doesn't get rained on and you can see that this one's here my grasula it says nfs not frost hardy they are sort of semi but not really that frost hardy in the sense that these are still cuttings and they might be a bit tender so i'm trying to protect them from too much frost and also rain rain is good for them but the frost is not so while they're growing otherwise they can survive once they're established or the roots have established they can survive uh, a little bit of frostiness but anyway so this atlantis is going to stay here now until springtime So once you're happy that you remove all the mushy bits, got some wet area here, I'm going to spray it with my solution just to disinfect everything that's here as well, bottom of the pot and also the plant itself. Just spray that all in. There you go. And we'll just wipe everything down. So this is like disinfecting everything even my tweezer so that's all or my forceps and tweezer although even I haven't used it but anyway and now we let it dry or leave it to dry and I will take a little saucer and put some rocks or granite I've got some granite here this is just to elevate the pot or the bottom of the pot so it can breathe and then I'm gonna let it sit here so that way any water that's in the pot here can drain down and collect in the bottom without touching the bottom of the pot allowing airflow for our little potted succulents our little belladonna and I am not putting it back where I had it growing instead I'm gonna put it indoors here where my other plants here are growing and just leave it there to dry up and drain until the rain has stopped or when springtime comes so I can leave it here or when the rain stops then I could uh, maybe take it outside again so but for now this is where it's gonna sit to enjoy the Sun but it'll be protected from the element and it will give it time to dry out and I'm going to do the same with my Delulu to so just feel my way to the bottom 
and anything that's soft like even that one so you can see from that part it looks good but underneath that's rotted so we're going to search and destroy no we're not destroying we're trying to make it live we'll destroy the rotting leaves the other half of this I'm just gonna fill my way through it looks like it's not affected on this side it's only on that front side so just use the tweezer and remove the dry leaves that are in the bottom so just check it thoroughly or I'm just checking it thoroughly and anything that's sort of half half like those ones still remove it because that is just going to continue to rot and therefore affecting the rest of the plant so we have to remove and might as well take the ones in the bottom because that's also rotted there you go the translucency is on that end and but it's no good so I finished cleaning all underneath all the dry leaves as you can see but I'm still going to remove the other side of this because this is now um, wonky. <laughs> so one side has got a lot of leaves, the other side hardly any. So I might as well even out the whole area. And then that way, giving it or giving the plant more room to breathe underneath for the air to circulate. So I'm going to start from right in the bottom. So I'm just going to push down and wriggle from side to side. There you go. So now, even though that looks like it's okay, this one has got only a 10% chance of growing pup, but I will still keep it just in case. So, so I'm just going to put this on the paper so the paper towel can actually absorb any moisture. So I just leave that there. Come on, maybe move that there so you can see. And hang on, that's a bit difficult. So... We're going to continue, or I'm going to continue to remove the bottom leaves. So push down and wriggle from side to side. Because we don't, oopsie, trying to see, hang on, that's still up high. Is there a lower one? Yes, there is. There you go. There you go. So that one has got a good chance of growing babies. and that one too so that one a pie that's also root rot so we're gonna throw that away and that's still not even so I'm gonna remove one two two more leaves in the bottom so there you go now are we gonna it's still that this is still not even isn't it so I'm gonna remove some more take them off So this Delulu here is actually, this is already a baby propagated from a leaf. And now she's already produced a lot more leaves that is going to grow into or possibly grow into more babies. So I just leave them in here to dry up and basically sort of germinate and this one as well I'm going to put into my shell that's out there I'm not going to put that outside I'm going to leave it in here now this one now I'm going to spray with my methyl solution as well all plants and all and saturate the soil to kill any fungus that might Possibly there's a bit of dirt. Just gonna use this to it doesn't hurt the plant. And there you go. This is a Dachevria bluebird, and this Achevria bluebird had the same experience as the Delulu, except I did not remove 
the leaves on the back. I left it. I only took out the rotting leaves that's in the front here. So what the plant did is sort of grow sideways. So I kind of like that look as well. So I'm not going to remove the leaves that are in the back. Then I'm just going to leave this as is and just transplant this in a pretty pot because I'm kind of liking the look of this bluebird. So this one would be an ideal candidate for some of my rock succulent arrangement. So the plant I put on the top where it gets plenty of light and the leaves I put in the bottom here where they can germinate because it's a little bit darker here. It doesn't get, it's still bright, but it doesn't get as much light as up the top. So that's going to sit there for the next couple of months, I would say, until the, the baby all popped out. So normally with the Lulu, they germinate quite quickly. So in maybe three months time, I'll have some the Lulu or new the Lulu babies from this baby. It's now been three days since I took off all the rotting leaves and my Echeveria de Lulu has dried up. You can see the stem is nicely cleaned up and dried up and stable. So now even the flower or the inflorescence that's about to flower at the top there is all nice and pink. So this is where I'm going to keep it so it's going to stay dry. And also my Belladonna. Belladonna is the same. Belladonna has also dried up and is looking healthy and hopefully on its way to producing more pups even though it's quite small, the stem part of it. Hopefully it will still put out some pups as well. And if not, it doesn't matter. It can just grow into beautiful baby belladonna into a mature plant.